get in there and you look at census data and Bureau of Labor Statistics data, you realize immediately that talking about urban and rural divides is just like, it's a total misnomer. You can talk about regional divides. So you can say, you know, broadly speaking, the Northeast is doing much better than the South. And the South continues to be economically depressed and has been for decades. Um, in fact, to the point that when you remove the South from a socioeconomic analysis, you see that urban and rural poverty levels are the same. The thing that struck me so deeply in talking to folks in rural America was almost all of them had less than people I know in urban America. And yet they seemed so much more content. Their view of the world was not material. I mean, one of my respondents who I interacted with a lot, I mean, she lives in a trailer in the middle of Appalachia. She does not have a lot of money. And yet, I, I mean, you wouldn't even think about money talking to her. It just wasn't a part of her worldview to, to, for it to matter. People care about the same stuff. I mean, we care about our families. We care about holidays where we can be with our friends and families. We care about being good people. We've like prioritized this idea that like what newspaper you read and who you vote for matters more than like who you are as a human being. We're all people and I don't mean to be hippie about it, but I actually think it's important to remind yourself that there's a lot of noise making us think we're different when we're not. If you live in the bubble of highly educated, upwardly mobile people, there is an expectation that all of those children go to university. And I think the same applies for them. Like, they may not want to do that either. And yet there is this idea that that's just their track. So my dream is like the kid in West Virginia who does want to be the bioscientist, he gets to go to Yale. And then that girl who grew up in the Palisades who actually likes to like work with things gets to be a carpenter. But we don't have those choices right now. If you were advising a Democratic candidate, because we know there tend to be voting differences, what would you tell them if they wanted to reach out across this divide? I would tell them to stop moralizing. People are not rational in some sort of, no offense, economist view of the world. Culture does embody so much of who we are, and when we feel Left, down, left out or looked down upon, we don't want anything to do with that. We didn't like it in elementary school, we don't like it as voting adults. So I would tell Democrats to stop that. What about on the Republican side? They need to ditch the far right. It is doing nothing but disservice to their agenda. There are a lot of super moderate, decent Republicans and they do not agree with the far right. They do not relate to the things that are going on on the far right. And they need politicians who will speak up and just be, you know, the Mitt Romneys of the world, just decent Republicans doing their thing. I think that our social media and just general, frankly, the geography of the United States has created this vacuum for all of us to live in. And my hope is that if we actually spent any time at all talking to people, and I mean in even the most quotidian way, like you're on an airplane with someone and you're having to visit your aunt who lives in Arkansas or whatever, that you spend a moment talking to them and understanding them as people because that is actually how we're gonna heal this country.